Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I'm glad to see you again. Multicollinearity test is one of the assumptions your data must satisfy before you can perform multiple linear regression analysis in order for your model to have valid outputs. In my previous video, I treated multiple linear regression analysis in XPSS, but in this video, I will be demonstrating how to perform tests of multicollinearity of data in XPSS. And I will also show you what you can do if your data has significant issue of multicollinearity. My name is Ttoken and this is Ttoken Mac Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please kindly do so now to encourage education and learning. And we will keep you notified every time I publish new content. Multicollinearity occurs when two or more independent variables are highly correlated with one another in a regression model. And when this occurs, it means that an independent variable can be predicted from another independent variable in a regression model. And this outcome is bad for multiple linear regression analysis. That means multicollinearity inflicts the variance and causes type 2 error. It also makes the coefficient of a variable consistent but unreliable. So when you perform multiple linear regression analysis, it is important to ensure that every available predictor or independent variable is significantly contributing to the response variable in the model, but not to the extent where each of the independent variable is highly correlated. When the predictors are highly correlated, it becomes difficult to identify which among the independent variable is contributing the most and which one is contributing the least and which one is not contributing to the model at all. So one of the reasons your data must not have multicollinearity issue is to ensure that in the regression model, the estimates of the regression coefficient is not unstable. And if the coefficients are unstable, the response variable or the outcome will be misleading. There are various ways to test or check for multicollinearity in your data set. These include 1. Tolerance 2. Various inflation factor, VIF 3. Condition index and 4. Correlation analysis Now, let's handle them one by one. 1. Tolerance In multiple linear regression analysis, tolerance is an indicator of multicollinearity and the tolerance is estimated using the equation 1 minus R square, where R square is the coefficient of determination calculated by regressing the independent variable of interest onto the remaining independent variables included in the multiple linear regression analysis. There are acceptable levels of tolerance. The most common among the recommendation is a value of 0 0.1 which is recommended as the minimal level of tolerance. However, there are other suggestions that recommend minimal value of tolerance to be 0 0.2 and 0 0.25 respectively. It is important to note that the smaller values of tolerance denotes higher levels of multicollinearity and higher values of tolerance denote smaller levels of multicollinearity. The choice of which minimum value to use is yours, and you are hereby advised to make the choice according to the purpose of your project. But in this tutorial, I strongly recommend that the minimum acceptable level of tolerance value should be 0 0.1 to avoid significant issues of multicollinearity in your dataset. That means, if the tolerance is less than 0 0.1, then there is significant issue of multicollinearity in your dataset, and this outcome will require that you correct your data if possible before you can use it for multiple linear regression analysis. Two, variance inflation factor, VIF. Variance inflation factor is defined as a reciprocal of tolerance, which means the equation can be written as VIF equals 1 all over 1 minus R square, where the R square is the coefficient of determination. 
when multicollinearity exists in your data set, the variances of the estimated coefficients are inflated. Therefore, what this equation does is to quantify how much the variance is inflated for each of the predictors or independent variables in a multiple regression model. There are various acceptable levels of VIF. These include VIF of 10, VIF of 5, and VIF of 4. You are at liberty to use any of these VIF criterion according to your project, but in this video, I recommend a value of 10 as the maximum level of VIF. This is because a VIF recommendation of 10 corresponds to tolerance recommendation of 0 0.1. So, if VIF is greater than 10, then you can conclude that there is a serious or strong multicollinearity issue with your data set. And this will also require that you correct your data if possible before you can use it for multiple linear regression analysis. 3. Condition index. Condition index is the square root of condition number, which is the measure of the stability of an estimate. The acceptable levels include condition index of 15 and condition index of 30. So according to the rule of thumb, if the condition index is greater than 15, it means multicollinearity is suspected in your data set. While if condition index is greater than 30, it means there is a serious or strong issue of multicollinearity present in your data set. So there will be need to correct your data if possible before you can use it for multiple linear regression analysis if the condition index is greater than 15 or greater than 30. Four, correlation analysis. Correlation analysis is a statistical method used to measure the strength of the linear relationship between two variables. But when correlation analysis is performed between two or more independent variables or predictors in regression analysis with resultantly high collinearity among the predictors, multicollinearity is either suspected or present in the data set. This is true because multicollinearity is a situation where two or more predictors are highly linearly related. So according to the rule of thumb, an absolute correlation coefficient of 0.7 between two or more independent variables indicate the presence of multicollinearity. Why absolute correlation coefficient greater than 0.7 between two or more independent variables indicate serious issue of multicollinearity? This means you are required to correct your data if possible before you can use it for multiple linear regression analysis if the absolute correlation coefficient is 0.7 or more. Now let's go into XPSS to demonstrate this test. In this video, I'll be using this dataset, which is already loaded into XPSS. The independent variables are IV1, IV2, and IV3, while the dependent variable is DV. This dataset is to be used to perform multiple linear regression analysis, but it is expected that you ensure the data does not have multicollinearity issue. So as one of the conditions or assumptions that must be satisfied, I have to first test the dataset for multicollinearity issue and ensure it is tenable. Now, go to the menu bar and click on Analyze. From the sub-menu, click on Regression. And from the drop-down options, click on Linear to open the Linear Regression dialog box. In this Regression dialog box, your variables are in the box on the left, and on the right, you have Dependent box and the Independent List box. Now, from the box on the left, click on the Dependent variable, DV and then click on this transfer arrow key to move it to the dependent box on the right. Thereafter, hold down the control key and click on the independent variables, IV1, IV2, and IV3, and then click on the transfer arrow key to move them to the independent list box on the right. Now, 
The next thing we can do now is to click on the statistics button to open the linear regression statistics dialog box. This is where the test for multicollinearity assumption is performed. In this dialog box, the estimates and the model fit have been checked by default. Please uncheck these boxes because they are not useful in this demonstration. Then, check the box for collinearity diagnostics. This selection produces the statistics that are used to test for multicollinearity. Then, click continue to close this dialog box. There is nothing more to do. Just go straight and click OK and the results are produced in the output window. In this output window, there are three tables. The first table is called Variable Entered or Removed, and this table describes the number of independent variables entered into the regression model, which include IV1, IV2, and IV3, plus method of the analysis carried out, which in this case is regression analysis, identified in this table as enter. The second table is called coefficients and it produces the tolerance and the variance inflation factor VIF as collinearity statistics for each of the independent variable or predictor. And table 3 is called collinearity diagnostics. In this table, many collinearity information are given such as model dimension, egging value, condition index and variance proportion for the model variables. But in this table 3, we will concentrate only on the condition index. Now, let's take the method of testing for collinearity assumption one by one. One, tolerance. Let's proceed to table 2. According to the rule of thumb, if the tolerance is less than 0 0.1, then there is significant issue of multicollinearity in your dataset. But here in this table, the value of tolerance is 0 0.816 for IV1, 0 0.672 for IV2, and 0 0.766 for IV3. As you can see, all of these values are greater than 0 0.1. So by virtue of tolerance, we can conclude that there is no issue of multicollinearity in this dataset. 2. Variance Inflation Factor VIF In this table 2 also, you have the VIF. Since the variance inflation factor is a reciprocal of the tolerance, then data with VIF greater than 10 can be said to have serious issue of multicollinearity. But here in this table, the VIF for IV1 is 1.225, the VIF for IV2 is 1.489, and the VIF for IV3 is 1.305. So as you can see, all of these values are less than 10, and by virtue of variance inflation factor, VIF, we can conclude that there is no issue of multicollinearity in this dataset. Finally, let's scroll to table 3 for condition index. According to the rule of thumb, if condition index is greater than 15, collinearity is suspected in your dataset. But if condition index is greater than 30, Serious issue of multicollinearity is present in your dataset. But here in this table, we have condition index 16.455 and 18.170 respectively, which are greater than 15. This means multicollinearity is suspected in this dataset by virtue of condition index. In this case, there is a necessity to correct the data before you can use it for multiple linear regression analysis. The following are the list of how you can correct your dataset if it has issue of multicollinearity. 1. You can remove one or more independent variables that are highly correlated from your dataset. 2. You can linearly combine two independent variables that are having the highest correlation among themselves. 3. 
you can subject your data to principal component analysis or partially square regression in order to reduce the number of variables to one with no correlation between them. Four, you can decide to add more independent variables since statistically, a regression model with more data is likely to have less or no variance due to large sample size. And five, you can perform a mean difference on the affected independent variables. Now, let's use correlation analysis to test for multicollinearity assumption in this data. Go to the menu bar again and click on Analyze. From the sub-menu, put your cursor on Correlate. And from the drop-down options, click on Bivariate. And the correlation bivariate dialog box opens. In this dialog box, hold down the control key and select IV1, IV2, and IV3, which are the three independent variables. Then click on this transfer arrow key to move them to the variable box on the right. Then go straight and click OK, and the table of correlation matrix is displayed in the output window. As you can see, correlating the independent variables one against the others did not produce any value 0.7 or value greater than 0.7. So, we can conclude that by virtue of correlation analysis, there is no issue of multicollinearity in the data sets. This is how to perform tests of multicollinearity in XPSS. If you have any question, please leave it with me at the comment section. But right now we have come to the end of this video and I hope you'll be able to replicate the procedure as demonstrated in this video to perform tests of multicollinearity of your own data in XPSS. If you like this video and you want to see more video contents like this, please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that we can begin to send you notification every time I publish new and useful content. Subscription is free. Thanks for your time and subscription and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.